Hello friends, in this particular video, I am going to discuss how you can use E50 for practical data analysis. So you can use the concept of fast Fourier transform to analyze those kind of data which are having one periodic nature. Like if you consider the C level going up and down, it, 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 there is a periodic nature in it. If you consider the sunspot, okay, the sunspot arriving uh, in a periodic interval okay if you consider the sale of uh, sweaters it also follows a periodic nature in summer it decreases in winter it increases like that so if you having a data set which is having a periodic nature then what is the period that is main sign components present there is main periodic nature sinusoidal signal present in that uh, data set that you can calculate to predict the future okay so I will discuss uh, the idea briefly here. Listen how you can use that A50 concept. Suppose you are getting peaks uh, after calculating the A50, if you take the absolute part, suppose you are getting the uh, frequency component main peaks at F1, F2 and F3. Okay, so what you can uh, tell that in your data set, the in, the, in your periodic uh, nature data set, uh, main uh, frequency components which are present F1, F2, F3. So you can write like this sine uh, 2 pi F1 T plus sine 2 pi F2 T plus sine 2 pi f 3 t this particular signal suppose this is x of t this particular signal will form a particular waveform okay it may go like this Suppose the periodic nature it is having some 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 um, kind of uh, nature it is having. So if you are getting this particular signal addition of some sign components, then you can predict what is uh, the outcome in future at a particular time. Okay, because the data set will be periodic. So what you can do at a particular time in future, what may be possible outcome? which is obviously will not exactly match with that future output but you can predict somewhat we can get an idea of that data somewhat right you can put the t value of future and you can get the x of t corresponding to the future data set okay so like that you can use a50 for practical data analysis okay but before moving to the practical data analysis there is one problem that whatever data set we will be having that will be with respect to time some discrete values we will be getting and time will be some discrete uh, samples okay suppose after 0 0.5 second time interval you are measuring some particular data okay so that data set will be having the sampling time of 0 0.5 second or we can say the sampling frequency of 1 by 0 0.5 hertz okay like that now the problem is what is the frequency range when we will be plotting our F50 because F50 we consider in digital domain but our signal is in time domain which is generally always everything in our uh, nature is in analog form. So the problem will be we have to map the digital frequencies that is plot of the absolute part of F50 in our analog domain. So what is the frequency range we will be plotting that is what is this particular range we have to plot in case of uh, analog frequency domain that's what our next discussion so you know that our analog frequency obviously uh, will be uh, from 0 to fs by 2 okay when well, fs is sampling rate now if you uh, remember our digital frequency in radian varies from 0 to pi and if you uh, just recall the concept of DFT, interpretation of DFT, I have told you that we basically sample the, we basically sample the frequency. In frequency domain sampling, uh, we perform 
in case of EFT or SFT, right? So basically, here this particular point corresponding to 0 or DC and this particular point corresponding to pi. So 0 to pi, this whole range is our point of interest. Omega equal to pi means this particular point corresponding to what? You know omega equal to 2 pi by capital N into K where N is the total number of uh, samples in which we are dividing in our frequency domain. So 2 pi by capital N into K equal to pi. So K will be equal to capital N by 2. So here N starting from 0 and it will go on up to N by 2. So 0 to N by 2, this particular range should be our point of interest when we will be performing our a50. This simple idea you know that is 0 to pi is our point of interest. That means in N we can say 0 to N by 2. So now this particular 0 corresponding to DC, all right, and this particular omega equal to pi, that is this digital frequency in radian equal to pi, when it happens, when F, that is analog frequency is equal to Fs by 2, okay, I hope you remember the derivation I have already shown you, this particular frequency range when it is mapped to digital frequency in radian, we are getting 0 to pi, so Fs by 2 is mapped to pi okay so fs by 2 is our analog frequency corresponding to pi omega equal to pi so this is also called nyquist frequency so our analog frequency point of interest is 0 to fs by 2 and in digital domain we are dividing that into some samples and what is the total number of samples see in capital n varies from 0 to capital n by 2 right i have told you in the range 0 to pi our capital n varies from 0 to n by 2 that means total how many samples n by 2 plus 1 samples because it is starting from 0 not from 1 if it starts from 1 then we can say total n by 2 samples but as it is starting from 0 so we have to say 0 to n by 2 that means total n by 2 plus 1 samples and don't forget to take float of n by 2 because uh, in some time you may get n by 2 as some point that is uh, 5.23 this kind of value so this is not possible we have to map to nearest lowest integer so in exact words we can say that our uh, practical analog frequency should vary from 0 to fs by 2 and there will be how many total samples float of n by 2 plus 1 generally it should be n by 2 plus 1 but we are taking float to avoid the point values okay fractional values to avoid the fractional values we can tell float of n by 2 plus 1 okay so basically as you know this particular point corresponding to fs by 2 so 0 to fs by 2 and the spacing total number of samples should be float of n by 2 plus 1 so our frequency will be we can write the code like this lean space 0 comma fs by 2 this is minimum analog frequency this is maximum analog frequency and this is float of n by 2 plus 1 that means this many number of samples it will generate in this particular range and that will be linearly spaced so lean space okay now n we can easily calculate in the data set whatever is the length that will be n the problem is how to find capital fs or we can say the sam sampling rate very simple you have measured your data set with some interval that is suppose delta t that delta t that time interval is nothing but sampling time and inverse of sampling time is sampling frequency so we can simply tell delta t is sampling time so fs that is sampling frequency is 1 by delta t simple like that we can calculate fs or sampling rate for our practical data set like we sampling rate for our practical data set okay now let us consider one practical scenario you have been in, invited on board uh, the RV Generu. Uh, 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 what is the pronunciation? Sorry, uh, Gunerus. Sorry, Gunerus. A ship that belongs to NTNU that will be carry several research activity on a trip of Norwegian sea. The vessel will be visiting uh, the area where Asta. Hansen, okay, Asta Hansen uh, field will be located 67 degree latitude and 7 degree longitude. Equinor sponsor your stay and place on the ship. The ship is equipped with a buoy that measures the wave elevation every 0 0.5 second. To show your gratitude uh, to the Equinor, you intend to process the wave elevation data that has been gathered for the period of 0. Point. Uh, two point uh, sorry 2047.5 second duration of the trip so what you have to do try to understand the case study 
you are mapped to one particular place where sea level data set is taken with the interval of 0.5 seconds so our sampling time is 0.5 seconds so our sampling frequency is 1 by 0.5 okay all right you have measured the data set for 2047.5 seconds now what you can do the wave will go up and down in a periodic nature from the simple science we can understand general knowledge this is now if you able to measure the FFT and the if you can observe the frequency component okay the major peaks if you able to calculate corresponding frequency to uh, the frequency corresponding to the major peaks of the absolute part of FFT so you can sum that sinusoidal frequency and you can make one equation and you can tell that the wave uh, going up and down will follow that particular uh, nature of that uh, sinusoidal signal okay with that you can conclude so let me directly go to the case study so this is our data set the data set link i will be giving in the description i have imported the data set in matlab clc clear all close all and then z equal to in a z variable i have taken my data set okay so this particular first column corresponding to the time okay first as in the question itself it was mentioned that you were measuring the interval with 0.5 second so at 0 you have measured then 0.5 second then 1 second 1.5 second so on it goes and the m second uh, column is corresponding to the wave elevation going up or down so 0 0.8 uh, is it is going up then 0 then minus 0 0.5 that means wave is going sea level is going down like that it will go on okay so first column is uh, time and second one is the wave elevation okay now the data set is quite huge uh, and obviously you should take large data set so that your prediction will be good enough for tactical analysis now what i have done z1 equal to z of first column uh, that uh, all the first uh, column elements i have taken in z1 which is our time and all the second column elements we have taken in z2 variable on which we have to perform a 50 so z2 equal to z colon comma 2 now we are calculating the length of our data set, uh, length of Z2, then we are computing F50 of that point. Obviously of Z2, that is of second column, we have to calculate the F50 because we want to get the periodic nature in the wave form so that uh, Z2 is storing the wave level so that obviously we have to compute the F50 for the second column. Then I told you already in my previous video that our main interest should be 0 to n by 2 so in MATLAB the index cannot be started from 0 it starts from 1 so 1 to n by 2 plus 1 and I have taken float to avoid the point or fractional value of n by 2 right now as in the data set as in the case study itself it was mentioned if you see that elevation every 0 0.5 second so 0 0.5 seconds so that fs will be 1 by 0 0.5 as I have discussed then I have taken my analog frequency that is x axis the frequency range lin space 0 comma fs by 2 comma flow of n by 2 plus 1 and then I am plotting the absolute part of a 50 with respect to our analog frequency f you can use stem but uh, plot will give us a good uh, visualization so that I am using plot but practically it will be of discrete nature so you can use stem so if I run evaluate this particular part already the uh, data set I have evaluated now if I evaluated this particular last few lines then we will be getting this kind of nature so this is our major peaks let me go to tools and then data cursor so what you can do you can tell our main uh, sea level going up and down is uh, corresponding to this particular major sinusoid signals there is one corresponding to 0 0.055 hertz another corresponding to 0 0.07 hertz major one corresponding to 0 0.087 some hertz next one corresponding to 0 0.1035 hertz next one corresponding to 0 0.1191 hertz next one here it will be 0 0.135 hertz then next one 0 0.1514 hertz next one 0 0.167 hertz next one 0 0.1831 hertz next one 0 0.1987 hertz so basically if you add all these uh, frequency components you will be getting one sinusoid wave form and you can tell okay our uh, wave nature in this particular area in the sea uh, will follow this particular wave form 
after this after this particular uh, suppose you want to predict the future value you just put uh, the t that is time in the particular equation which will be formed after adding up all the frequency components sign signal and you can tell okay this is my uh, probable or pre uh, predicted uh, wave level at that particular time in future okay so like that prediction can be done using fft and the major component is this peak of the a50 that is 0.0874 approximately 0.08 if we consider so the major if you consider the major part of peak spectra so you will be getting 1 by 0.08 sorry 1 by 0.087 something so 11.49 seconds so after 11.49 second uh, the periodic nature will come but not exactly because we are considering only major part you have to consider all the uh, uh, peaks of a50 magnitude spectrum or of a50 so if you add all of them then the sine signal whatever you will be getting like sine uh, 2 pi f1 t plus sine 2 pi f2 t and so on that is all the major peaks if you add whatever sign expression you will be getting in that if you put the t value you can predict the future value also okay so this is how a50 is used in data science also uh, but it can be used only when some periodic nature is present in your data set okay so i hope you have understood the idea main part is relating the digital frequency output of a50 with our analog frequency i hope this is the most important line which you have understood i think if you have any doubt please ask in the comment section the same code i am going to post in the description data set link also i will post in the description and if you want the python video one fa our faculty has explained in a good way uh, the python code that faculty video link also i will be posting in the description you can check Thank you for watching.